Oil painting is one of my favorite traditional mediums, but to tell you the truth, I don't really like using it all that much. It gets everywhere, it's a real mess. Not to mention buying all the tools you need to use to make oil paintings, it gets really expensive. You got the canvas, high quality brushes, the paint, oof. So I consider it a real blessing. I live in this modern day and age where I can just pop open my iPad, open something like Procreate or Clip Studio Paint, and just paint whatever I want, full portability, zero mess. So with the right tools and knowledge, even you can make a digital oil painting with ease. And I'll be the one to guide you there through my painting process. Hi, Chilin here. And I'm excited to have you here to follow along with me. I'll be using Clip Studio Paint for the iPad for all of my painting in this video. For this tutorial, I compiled a simple brush pack that I'll be using for painting that should suffice your every need. You can download it for free from the Asset Store, which I'll link in the description. First things first, let's talk about value structures. So a value structure refers to the organization and composition of light and dark shapes. This sounds like a simple concept, but it can be hard to execute. The goal is to really boil down the essence of light and shadow to create form. This is why art teachers usually make students study still life, as it allows you to gain an understanding of designing basic forms and structures with the most extreme limits. When you study more complicated forms, it can be helpful to squint at whatever you're observing. This can help your eyes separate the light and shadow more easily by adding more contrast to your perception. Here I've drawn a close-up portrait and I'm going to design a two-value structure with a few different lighting scenarios in mind. I'm attempting to really accentuate the round form of the top of her head while also considering how the light might affect more complex shapes in the facial features and clothing. Don't be shy from looking at reference photos. I looked at different lighting references to help with all of these. Let's take a closer look at this example, where I designed the value structure according to a light source coming from the upper right corner. Most of the facial features became merged into one block of shadow tone but little details give enough context to allow our brains to fill in the blanks. A balanced composition benefits from a combination of a focus area and spaces of breathing room. Here you can see the general separations of the composition, a big block of dark values for resting and the more detailed areas on the right for engaging. To summarize, when designing value structures, make sure to simplify enough so that the value structure is clear and shows form. Try to strike a balance between high detail and breathing room in your compositions. And don't be shy about looking at reference images. Alright, you may be wondering, what is the point of making those value structures? Aren't oil paintings about color? Okay, yes, you're right. But trust me, Here's how we're going to change this business into an underpainting. First, I'm recoloring the two tones and the sketch. Try to keep these colors generally monochromatic, meaning being the same or similar hue. In oil painting, you might see these colors being commonly used for underpaintings. Second, we'll apply a canvas texture over the underpainting. To do this, search for a canvas in the materials folder and simply drag it in. Then, under Layer Properties, select Recolor Layer. Now change the layer mode to Overlay and voila! Let's move on to blocking in colors. During the color blocking process, I'm treating the value structure almost as a coloring book. You can see how I fill in each chunk with its own color. I'm keeping the brush strokes loose since I like how the underpainting interacts with the colors being painted. At this stage, be sure to pay attention to the color relationships, meaning checking out that they still work with the value structure and that they work harmoniously next to each other. Don't worry about backtracking or picking the so-called wrong color. It's digital, baby. You can still use Control Z to your heart's content until you get your desired results. After I'm feeling satisfied with the general colors, I'll start rendering. 
I usually start by refining the facial features, adding details to the hair, doing some overall cleanup. In the shadowed portion of her face, I'm keeping the contrast somewhat low to align with my value plan and using the texture smudge brush to mix colors directly on the canvas so that my colors somewhat blend in with each other. Moving on, I'm adding more detail to her clothes and adding hints of color saturation here and there to offset my rather monotonous colors. Within big solid chunks of color, like in her skin, I'm subtly adding some color vibrancy for more texture. Let's take a moment to talk about brush techniques. Different brush techniques can really make an impact in oil paintings. A lot of these textured brushes have their own strong suits, and I'll show you a few specific techniques I used for this painting, mostly inspired by some of my favorite painters. The first technique is gonna be cross-hatching. It involves adding color with brush strokes following the same angle. It can accentuate certain parts of your painting in a loose but interesting way. While I was color blocking, I ended up really liking how I did the hatching on the lips, so I wanted to retain that. I also used hatching in other areas of the painting to add texture by using subtle color changes. This technique is inspired by the great JC Lion Decker, my favorite oil painter. Technique number two is edge control. I mentioned before how I wanted to keep contrast low in the main shadow area. One way I'm doing this is by slightly feathering any sharp edges using the super dry oil paint brush at a big size. This way there is a visual contrast between the shadow area looking really soft and the area in light which looks a lot sharper. The third technique, scribbling to suggest detail. Truthfully, I'm just not the type of person who enjoys doing super perfect rendering. Love looking at it, but I just don't want to do it. It entails using a very thin brush to make details out of scribbles. You can see this most clearly in the sleeve section, where I use the oil sketch brush to scribble some lace. The fourth technique is adding vibrancy with hue shifts. It's a technique often used by painters during the Impressionist movement. Go to brush settings, color jitter, turn on randomize per stroke, and increase that hue by 100. On the skin, I'm eye dropping the underlying color to get its value. I'll dapple some brush strokes on. It looks shocking at first, but I can easily use the textured smudge brush to blend it in to make it look more harmonious. And the final technique, or should I say, mindset is embrace imperfections. Imperfections contrarily offer a lot of visual interest and charm in oil paintings. You don't look at one of your favorite oil paintings and go, ugh, I can see a brush stroke there. Ugh, it's not perfect. You go, ooh, that is painterly. Ooh, that is beautiful. So throughout the painting process, take a step back now and then to evaluate whether you like how certain imperfections interact with the rest of the painting. And just embrace those brush imperfections and your happy accidents. And that's it. Here is my final painting. Thank you so much for joining me with this tutorial. And I hope you learned something new and maybe useful from my techniques. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.